Hello there and welcome back to Mathematics for Liberal Arts Chapter 4. Now to remind you of where we were last time we checked in, we went through Section 4.1 which is apportionment problems and methods, and we found that apportionment problems are fairly standard, they're all over the place, but they may be a little bit trickier than they first appear. So we need to introduce some actual methods that will help us. The first of those is Hamilton's method. Before we jump into Hamilton's method though, I want to note that some of these apportionment problems get a little bit lengthy. Uh, this is one of those chapters where problems can drag on for a while, so we may be finding that there are multiple parts to videos. If videos have multiple parts, don't worry, I will label them accordingly so that that way you know where we stop, where we start, and you can pick things right back up again. Okay, so if we're going to introduce Hamilton's method, then what we need to do is we need to introduce a few moving parts that will make things easier. The first of these is called the standard divisor, which is a very simple number. It's simply what we get when we take the total population, P, and we divide it by M, the number of seats. And I've included a little note here that says that the standard divisor basically means the ideal number of people per seat. That's because when you look at this number right here, P represents people, M represents seats, So when we put this fraction together, it kind of makes sense to think of this as people per seat. That explains this part of my little note. The ideal number portion, well, that basically comes about because whenever we're dealing with the standard divisor, this is the method we naturally gravitate toward using. This is the method that anybody who tries to work on one of these apportionment problems tries to use to begin with in order to get a fair apportionment. And if the world was perfectly fair, then every single time we use the standard divisor, we would be able to get the correct apportionment for every single one of the states, no sweat. In reality, that rarely happens. So we just think of SD as being the ideal number of people per seat, and then a lot of times we have to switch things up. Once we have the standard divisor, what we do is we look at every single one of the states individually and we calculate something for them called the standard quota. The standard quota for a state X is found by taking X's state population, which is PX, and dividing it by the standard divisor. And much like the standard divisor was the ideal number of people per seats, the standard quota represents the ideal number of seats we should be getting total. I'm not going to go through the calculations here, but if we rewrote everything using the definition for standard divisor, we would find that the units for this actually are seats by now. Mm. Just like with the standard divisor, unfortunately, the standard quota very rarely is what we actually end up giving to a state X. Very rarely does that happen. Most of the times, the numbers that we get for the standard quota end up being kind of like the numbers we were getting in the last section. They get to be very, very weird. Once we have standard quota, we can now def uh, define two numbers that we are going to need uh, very frequently, which we call the lower quota, LX, and the upper quota, UX. Both of those are for the state X. And the way we get them is by either rounding the standard quota down for LX, or by rounding the standard quota up for UX. Now I want to take a moment to address that really, really quickly. When I say round down or round up, this is not exactly like normal rounding. If I do round down, of say 4.5, we know that under normal rounding rules, 4.5 would be rounded up to 5 if we're rounding to whole numbers, which is what we're doing here. However, because we are rounding down, it simply forces this number, 4.5, down to a smaller number. It has to be a whole number, and it has to be the closest whole number to what we've got here, which means 4. If, on the other hand, I look at round up, round up is going to be very, very similar. The difference is that let's say I have 16.1 here. 
Under normal rounding rules, 16.1 would just get rounded to 16. However, round up forces my number to go to a whole number. That whole number has to be bigger than my whole number, and it has to be the closest whole number that is uh, bigger than my whole number. So, looking at this, 16 has to round up to 17. 17 is bigger, and it is the closest whole number, bigger than 16.1, so we hit 17. It's important to know how to do these, because we're going to be using them again and again and again. Alright, now that we have those definitions out of the way, we can actually define Hamilton's method. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume we have an apportionment problem. We are given the total population to be P. We know the total number of seats is M. And then we're going to follow some steps. So step one is going to be to simply find the standard divisor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the standard quota and the lower quota for each and every single state. In other words, going back, we're going to first find SD. Then for every single state from A all the way through whatever, or from X1 all the way through Xn, we calculate the standard quota using this formula. Then we're going to use this formula down here for the lower quota for each of the standard quotas we obtained. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add all the lower quotas together. And whatever the sum of all the lower quotas is, we're going to compare it to M, the number of seats one of two things is going to happen. Either, once we've added all the lower quotas together, we're going to get exactly the same value as M, and if we're that lucky, then the problem is done. We've gotten ourselves into a very fortunate situation, and uh, we simply give every single one of these states its lower quota in seats. In other words, we give each state a number of seats, and that number has to be equal to the lower quota for that state. More frequently, though, we wind up with a situation where we add all the lower quotas together, but once we do that, the sum is less than m. Then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much smaller it is than m. In other words, we're going to figure out how many seats there are remaining, which we're going to represent here by d. It's the leftover number of seats. If we have gotten ourselves into a situation where we've had to calculate the leftover number of seats, meaning we are in situation B, then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to each of the states and we're going to calculate the difference between its standard quota and its lower quota. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these differences for each of the states side by side. The state that has the largest difference between standard quota and lower quota is going to get the first of the remaining seats. Then, the state which has the second largest difference between standard quota and lower quota is going to get the second of the leftover seats. You're just going to do this over and over again until you run out of extra seats to give. Once we've done that, we're going to be done. Every single state will either have its lower quota in seats, or it's going to have its lower quota in seats plus one additional seat. Now, that sounds kind of complicated, so I think what we should do is we should go ahead and do an example to try and clarify that. One problem here is that the problems uh, that we're going to be working on are actually just a little bit too big to put into a slideshow presentation. So by now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to switch over to the little uh, problem sheet that I've also distributed to you guys, labeled Chapter 4.2 Problems, and I'm going to start working in, on problems in there. If we run, run out of time after working on the first problem, we'll pick up on the second problem in the second half of this video. Okay, so we have here a problem called the Parador Congress problem. We're going to come back to it a lot. It is very similar to the Parador Congress problem in the book, but I will warn you, some of the numbers are just a little bit different. All right, now in order to apportion congressional seats to each of the states here that we've represented, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start by following Hamilton's method. And what did Hamilton's method say is the very first step? Well, 
we need to calculate the total population. We already know the total number of seats. This is M right there. So the question is, what is the total population? Now when I made these boxes to begin with, I really was kind of optimistic about how much space I was going to need. As it turns out, I'm going to need a lot more space to be able to fill this out. So let's just gonna go ahead and write this uh, out all the way. So if we do the total population, the total population ought to be 16 million 466,000 plus 6,936,000 plus 154,000 plus 2,091,000 plus 685,000 plus 988,000. And according to my calculation, if we do that, we're going to end up with 27 million 320,000 as our total population. That's a lot of people, but not unexpected. So once we've gotten the number of seats and we've gotten the total population, we can go ahead and calculate the standard divisor. So the standard divisor is going to be P divided by M, like we talked about before, which for us means 27,320,000 divided by 250. And if we do that calculation, I obtain 109,280 exactly. Now I have a little space here where you can write that under each and every single one of these states. If you want to fill in every single one of these boxes, you absolutely can. I encourage you to use this table to the fullest extent you need, at least doing my steps. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little ditto marks in each of these boxes. All that's saying is I know that the standard divisor is going to be the same for each of these. Okay, I need to calculate standard quotas for each of these states. Now I could write it down here However, I want to conserve this space for other calculations, especially depending upon the method. We may need to use a lot of this space for calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply do the calculations in the calculator and then write them in the boxes here under each of the states as appropriate. Now one thing that I want to point out really quickly is that you're probably going to get some very weird numbers. That is okay. It's totally normal to get some very odd and very long numbers for these things. But when that happens, I'm going to simply cut off the decimal representation at three decimal places. And I'm going to round to the third decimal place as well. So that means when I do the state population for A, the state population for A is, or excuse me, the, the standard quota for A is the state population of 16,466,000 divided by 109,280. If you put that into your calculator, you're going to obtain 150.677. I'm gonna to have to write just a little bit smaller to make sure we have enough space. Okay, now let's do for state B. So I have 6,936,000 divided by 109,280. So that gives me 63.4, well, it would have been 469, but since to the right of the third decimal place there is another nine, it actually becomes 63.470. I include the zero there to communicate the fact that I had to round the third decimal place up. Okay, so now let's do 154,000 divided by 109,280. That should be 
2,091,000 divided by 109,280 gives me 19.134. 685,000 divided by 109,280 is 6. Point two six eight, and finally we have state F nine hundred eighty eight thousand divided by one hundred nine two eighty, which is nine point zero four one. Okay, now if I want to round these numbers down, it's not too hard. We simply really give the uh, whole number to the left of the decimal places. So that means that we're going to have 150 for A, 63 for B, 1 for C, 19 for D, 6 for E, and 9 for F. Now, if we add all of those things together, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. If I write LA plus LB plus LC plus LD plus LE oops, plus LF, and I add them all together, what is that going to give us? Is that going to give us all 250 seats? Let's see, 150 plus 63 plus 1 plus 19 plus 6 plus 9. Okay, that gave me 248. All right, so that means that there are two seats remaining. In other words, D for this problem is going to be 2. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't just finish Hamilton's method. What I have to do is I have to actually calculate the differences between the standard quota and the lower quota. However, even though that sounds kind of ugly, you're going to find very quickly that's not so hard. I already have the standard quota for A, for example, and I already have the lower quota, so I simply subtract the lower quota from the standard quota. And look, the difference has to be the decimal places right here. So that becomes 0 0.677. For B, it's going to be 63.470 minus 63, so that should just be 0 0.470. Uh, over here, it should be 0 0.409. Over here, we should get 0 0.134. Right here, we should get, uh, for state E, 0 0.268. And for F, we should get 0 0.041. Okay. Well, now, according to Hamilton's method, what I should be doing is I should be looking at each of these differences down here in this row. The state with the highest difference should get the first of the remaining seats. So looking at all these, I can see that the state with the highest difference is state A. So state A is going to get one additional seat. So it would have gotten 150, but now it's going to get 151 because it has the largest of all of these divisors. And you know what? I don't think that color is going to be really good for us. Let's pick something a little bit more eye-catching. Let's say purple. Oh, that looks absolutely marvelous. Okay, so now we only have one extra seat remaining. So we're going to just write that down here, one for A, just to keep note of what we've done. So now looking through the remainders again, ah, and I see I made a small mistake right here. 
it's important to keep track of this stuff in the table correctly. You don't want to make these mistakes because it will change the problem pretty significantly later on. Uh, okay, now that I've corrected that, looking back through the table again, I see the state that has the next largest uh, difference is B. So B should get an additional seat, which means that B gets 64 seats. Ah, and I should write that down here. But now we've run out of additional seats to give. We only had two to give. So that means everybody else should just get their lower quota. Well, now let's see what happens. If I add 151, 64, 1, 19, 6, and 9, I get exactly 250. So that means that right here, we have the final apportionment for all of the states, and we are done. Now, looking at the time on the video, I see that we really have run out of time. So this is going to be video part one. We will pick up problems in the next video. Until then, happy math.